paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty, which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. and welcome to yet another episode of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. Um, I'm about to show you what this video mostly is containing, that being um, a bunch of different, different clips of some really intelligent, sensible black people explaining how this whole, you know, Confederate flag thing is nothing but a bunch of division, hate, and race baiting and all that, and that there's really nothing wrong with uh, the Confederate flag. But before I do that, I'd just like to give you a brief little history lesson about the, uh, the Civil War, um, what most people don't realize. There started to be tons of taxes on everything. We had just broken away from England, so the South was getting pissed that it seems they just swapped a king for a president who was going to pull the same bullshit. So, they said to knock it off or they would succeed. Lincoln said if they tried to succeed, that he would initiate a civil war. The South said, so be it. The South called it the War of Northern Aggression, which is a more accurate name. There's nothing civil about war, and it was a war of northern aggression. The bankster-controlled North wanted to keep sucking money up from the South. Lincoln instituted martial law so he could force conscript people into the military and bypass Congress with the ability to write executive orders. Those orders can only be written in a state of martial law, which we have been in ever since. Lincoln freed slaves purely as a military strategy. In his words, If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that. That's a quote from Abraham Lincoln, August 24th, 1862. The 14th Amendment was created supposedly to free the slaves, but it does no such thing. It, men it, <coughs> excuse me. it mentions no involuntary servitude in order to introduce the concept of voluntary servitude. Originally, the USA was not a country, and it was never meant to be. It was a union of sovereign nation states. The occupants of those states were free sovereign people, with the exception of the slaves, of course. There were no citizens of the USA. In order for a slave to be emancipated, he needed to contract himself into voluntary servitude to become a citizen, a.k.a. employee, of the USA. Within this contract, the agreement was that the slaves had to be conscripted to the front lines of the war with the South, which they didn't mind doing because most of them were out for revenge. The idea of putting a gun to the slave master's head and saying, who's the nigga now, bitch, and pulling the trigger was very appealing, understandably. Another catch-22 of the 14th Amendment was that with voluntary servitude as a citizen, it also means they are obligated to agree to any and all changes within contracts, as well as auto-accept any new contracts with no ability to dispute it. So after the North won, 
and Lincoln having dictatorial power, he made 14th Amendment slaves of all of us. Your birth certificate is the first contract you are signed into these days by your parents against your will because a baby has no ability to say no. From that point forward, we are all legally contracted to accept anything they want to throw at us. So we went from being sovereign citizens to crap. <laughs> Freedom went down the toilet and no one ever knew. It was quite a clever scam. So the Civil War was never about freeing the slaves. It was about enslaving us all to this very day. Great Emancipator, my ass. This is not the Confederate national flag. When the United States split in twain during the Civil War, this was the first flag her rebel half used, the Bonnie Blue, which she copied from the Republic of West Florida. No, really, this country existed. A border disagreement between Spain and the US over the Louisiana Purchase gave some local rebels an opportunity to take over a fort in 1810, declare independence as required with a flag, and run a government for 78 days until the United States put an end to that. Anyway, fast forward to the Civil War, and when Mississippi seceded from the Union, she adopted the flag of the tiny country that had been within her borders, and it became the unofficial flag of the rebellion, but not for long. Blue wouldn't do. That's a Yankee color. The new Confederate government asked for flag designs and got several, including one from a German-Prussian artist in Alabama who possibly took design cues from the Austrian Empire and Betsy Ross. Side note here, while we're talking about misnamed flags, Betsy Ross probably didn't design this flag. There's no evidence to support that she did, only stories from long after she died. Lady Godiva style, but we're getting off track here. The Confederate government selected this as her official flag and named it the Stars and Bars, so calling this the Stars and Bars is wrong on two counts. That's not its name, and this is a cross. These are bars. New flag adopted, off to war, but on the battlefield, the flag's similarity with the Union's was confusing, what with the terror and the smoke. Nonetheless, the Confederacy stuck with her flag, but her army wanted to avoid friendly fire, and so took one of the rejected designs and squarified it into a battle flag. The Navy, too, liked this design and eventually switched, though using a brighter, presumably non-Yankee, blue. The popularity of the official flag decreased in the Confederacy as time went on, even though they kept increasing the stars, while the popularity of the battle flag grew. So in 1860, in 1863, the Confederate government tried again and went with white, sticking the battle flag in the corner. This was better in the sense that the flag looked less like the Yankees, but worse in that the international symbol of surrender was now in the background. The army stuck with theirs. Two years later, the Confederate government again changed the flag, adding a red bar and a new tough name. Also, the design slightly rectangularified the battle flag. This could no longer be mistaken for surrender and was the last flag as 36 days later, the Confederacy surrendered. So so this design was never technically the flag of the Confederate government, but close enough. I don't know what the hell the fight is about over the Confederate flag. We need to put the American flag down because we've cut as much hell under that as the Confederate flag. Who are we fighting today? It's the people that carry the American flag. What flag do the police have? What flag flies over the non-justice department? What flag flies over the White House where a black man lives that's called nigger, nigger, nigger every day? What about that flag? So every time we die, they give us a symbol, no substance. We died on Edmund Pettus Bridge under that flag.
under that flag. We fought in wars under that flag and came back and were hung and murdered and brutalized yes, under that flag. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't give us no symbol. Well, now we're going to pull the flag down. That's as easy as it is pulling your pants down. You got to answer a call to nature, you pull your pants down. That's easy. Pull a flag down and you're supposed to go away satisfied? See, you don't know what justice looks like. If somebody can pull a flag down and you're happy as though they did something. We want justice under that flag or what the hell is the use of us paying allegiance to a flag under which we get no justice. out there 
lot of people asking me, Kevin, how do you feel about the young black student, college student, liking the Confederate flag? Hanging that bitch up in his room. How do you feel? You know what? Let me explain something to you guys. I personally don't give a goddamn what he hang in his room. I don't know him. You know, it's a free country. Exercise the right of freedom of speech of whatever sort. You know, it's your business. It's not mine. But I am not going to jump on the bandwagon saying, you know, fuck the Confederate flag because I'm black. No, I'm not at all. You know, because you got to educate yourself on things before you start, you know, jumping off the deep end. A lot of people don't know what the Confederate flag represents, you know. You see the X right there? The X on the flag and the 13 stars. The X means no. Get the hell away. Peace. Not peace, but like, no. You know, people tell you. X means stop, you know, circle means go or something like that. You know, that's basically what the X is on that flag. And you see the 13 stars is the 13 southern states. They didn't want to have nothing to do with the northerns. They was beefing, hardcore, you know, so they they created the Confederate, the, I said the Confederate, the Confederate fucking states of America, all right? They just basically just disassociated themselves with each other. That's something that the South and the North had going on for a long time. It's easy for us to picture the Confederate flag when we see a Nazi or something because anytime you've seen a black person picking cotton or getting hung or something like that, it was in the South. It wasn't in the North, you know, and they represent their, you know, their, their flag, the, the South. It really, you know, it really means joy and values and stuff like that, the Southern pride. You know, Southern pride is not always meant as racism. I hate black people. There's some good Southern people out there, okay? You know, it's easy to get caught up in that because that's what we've seen. That shit happened in the South. If they had a damn flag on Michael Jordan dunking on Larry Bird with his balls in his mouth, they would represent that. That would be Southern pride, you know? Like, real talk. So that's why I really don't get caught up in that. I really don't give a damn. You know, it is what it is. You know, I can see why it causes controversy because a lot of people, you know, as soon as they see it, they just think of racism and this and that. I've been in bars in the South performing comedy and they got Confederate flags every fucking way, but they treated me like I was a king in that bar. I didn't feel no racist vibe or nothing. It's just what they represent. You know, just like the black community use the word nigga. You know, a lot of people don't understand why we say that. You know, I say it. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I say it in the comfort of my house, though. You know, I don't say it around a bunch of white people unless I know you like that. You're my N-word. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to say it in this video because I respect you guys enough. You know, it's just something that we grew up, in, grew up around and all that other stuff. Most people say it's ignorant as fuck. You know, just like people say that people who represent the Confederate flag is ignorant as fuck. That's not always true. That's not the case. So um, to the 18-year-old boy out there, I'm not mad at you, dog. You know, do what you do best. You know, represent what you want to represent. He did his homework on it. You know, it's easy for us to get caught on a bandwagon, to get caught up in the bullshit, to jump on something negative. I'm not doing that at all. You know, I mean, I can understand why some people do get mad because, you know, Southern pride, I'm just a Southern guy. I don't give a damn about the Northerns. It shouldn't be like that. We all should be one. But he was born in the South, and that's what it was. I mean, I don't personally understand, you know, what changed his mind because his parents wasn't representing that from the interview I've seen or whatnot. I guess it's part of being grown and making your own decisions or whatnot, so I guess I can, I can pretty much uh, accept what's going on. But people, don't get mad. Who gives a goddamn, you know? Who cares about the flag? I mean, well, I shouldn't disrespect the flag. I'm not disrespecting the flag. So I don't want no southern guy, southern guy with no, hey, you goddamn nigger, you. Don't talk about my flag. I had sex with my sister, and she covered up with that when we were done, because she was cold, goddamn it. And not all southern people talk like that at all. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to throw that out there. But um, I'm going to get out of here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Tweet this video. Follow me on Twitter. Like this video, please. You know, don't dislike it. Like it. Now watch, I get like six idiots dislike it right away. I'm out. Deuces. Hey, y'all. Uh, about a year ago or so, I asked the Australians one simple question. What the hell's going on around here? I don't know why or how what happened in South Carolina happened, but it happened, and it was it was a racist. That guy was a racist. He hated black folks. I don't know why. Probably because all the hate that's promoted 
by the U.S. federal government. But uh, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand up for the South. I'm going to stand up for myself. And I'm going to stand up for the Confederacy. We didn't kill nobody. And we didn't want nobody dead. I don't know what goes on in South Carolina. It's kind of like Alabama. We, we worry about them. They're like our, our, our special needs kids. You know, we worry about South Carolina and Alabama. They're, they're crazy. But you can't judge Dixie on that. You can't judge me. You can't judge the Confederate battle flag. You can't judge none of it on one instance. It's being promoted as get rid of the Confederate battle flag. Put it in a museum. The president's on, uh, that's what you want to call him. Uh, he, he's on TV using the N-word. We don't use that down here. Jesus Christ, people, if you don't live here, you don't know what the fuck's going on. But I'm about tired of it, so I'm probably going to piss off some Confederate brothers, and I'm probably going to piss you off, too. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Down here in the South, are we separatists? Yes. You're goddamn right. They stole the Constitution back in the 1800s. What part of history have you not learned? Or what's the fucking lies that you're going to believe? You know, I'm about sick of it. It was fought over the states' rights, not, not over, over slavery. Lincoln didn't even care about the black man. But he's y'all damn emancipator, ain't he? <laughs> read some of his speeches while he was a senator. And you need to research. That's another thing. I'm about tired of you Americans, Americans not thinking and just reacting to every goddamn thing that comes up on the TV. You've ruined a great country by being stupid, by being apathetic, by believing lies. What we do down here is our business. It's where we live. It's our region. It's our culture. They're trying to steal. I guess you want to leave out of history that they came down here 150 years ago and murdered all my kin and all my kind during Reconstruction. But I guess that's okay. Or the fact that, you know, slavery has existed since the time of the Babylonians and the Sumerians. It's always been there. You're a tax slave right now. But you don't care because you got a car and a house and a few bills and a credit card. And you can eat good when you want to. And you can go on vacation when you want to. So, no, nah, you don't mind being a slave. You're a happy slave. Your silence is their consent. Is, is consent. Your, 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 your compliance is consent. You doing things. Just because, uh, you know, oh, I believe it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I want to. That's why shit happens. There's millions of people that this U.S. federal government has murdered. The American flag is the hate symbol, not the Confederate battle emblem. And by the way, Lee surrendered this flag. So, you know, it's, it's whatever on that. The Georgia state flag, that's the national flag of the Confederacy. The North Carolina flag and several flags that have the, the red and the white bar and the little star and the 13 stars. That's that's the national flag of the Confederacy. But you don't bitch about that flag. Nah, but let me give you a little bit of history. I'm going to give you a little bit of history right here. I'm going to learn your ass about one goddamn thing. The Ku Klux Klan is, is a bunch of fools, man. We, we whoop their ass down here. We don't even want them down here. We don't want to be associated with hate at all, period. We're tired of the demonization of our culture and the way things are down here. Because we all really get along. If you live down here, you know that. But you don't because you want to watch the TV and you live up there or you live out west or somewhere and you're thinking, oh, them damn rednecks, they just screwing things up. Well, fine. But, he, but here's some history right here. It ain't got anything to do with uh, the flag. The Klan used the American flag as their symbol when the federal government infiltrated and was trying to promote hate and keep this race war going. They used the Confederate flag. They used it, not us. We ain't the fucking haters. No, all we hate down here is lies. That's all I hate. And I'm Southern. So there you go. Ask the federal government why they promote the Confederate battle flag to take. They don't want our culture. They don't want anything different. They want it the same from New York to California. They want a McDonald's on every corner. They want you all talking plain. I've been hearing Yankees come down the, the Appalachian Trail right down here below me, and they don't even sound like Yankees anymore. No, it's a cultural. They're, they're trying to dissolve culture. They want this one thing, and it's going to wind up whether you want to believe it or not. 
and uh, the Christians out there, uh, you know, you y'all know that the one world government and all that. That's what y'all believe. You know, is that that that's the Antichrist kind of shit and all that. Well, fine, whatever. The thing is, they want a one world government. They want a one currency. They want everything the same. So you don't think anymore, cause you don't fucking think. I'm tired of being nice about that too. You don't think anymore. You don't research. You just you hear something and you react and you hate this and you hate that and everything's fucking bad. Well, it ain't. It ain't bad. What's bad is the fact you don't think. I'm tired of it. I'm seriously tired of it. Not only are you demonizing my Dixie, the South, and Southerners, and and our little symbols of what we you know what we believe in, you, you're you're complying to the, what they've been trying to do all along. Make you more ignorant. They don't want you to know anything. All they are is a bunch of greedy fuck. It's just corporations, man. It's not even a government anymore. The federal government was bought out a century ago. Look at the Industrial Revolution. You got everything you want on this little thing right here. Smartphone, uh, your computer, your video camera, all that's in one little bitty device. But we're still on the same gas engine for the last 125 years. Think about that. They're raping my planet. I give a fuck less about your goddamn politics. I could give a fuck less about what you think. Just look at the planet. They rape, they rape the planet daily. They, they go to war. They kill your sons with the American flag. And they promote democracy around the goddamn world, which means we're going to bomb you and take your shit. But no, nah, man. You want to worry about, you know, hate group. That guy that killed them poor folks down there, up there in South Carolina, you're damn right. He was a racist. He was a hater. But why was he doing it? Think about that. Number one. He was taking Prozac. All the shooters in America have been on some kind of damn mind-altering, antidepressant kind of drug. That's something we should think about. Boy, you want to ban the gun. Why don't you ban the drugs that fucking hurt people? But no, man, no, no, no. We're not going to do that. We don't want them to be depressed. So they go off, they kill somebody. But look at the hate the federal government, the United States government, has promoted. Uh... The Trayvon Martin thing. He wasn't even killed by a white guy, but hey, fuck that. Who gives a fuck about that fact? But when he was killed, Obama gets on on the news and says, that could have been my son. Uh, That's promoting racism. He gets on uh, TV just here the other day and uses the N-word. That's racism. You know, he's half white. So what side you gonna believe? But see, it's not half nothing. We're human beings, people. We're human beings. And without this planet, Without this rock. Look at this. Without that, you ain't got jack shit. <laughs> but yeah, man, you want to get on that TV and, 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 and believe that stuff, that's up to you. Truth is not mine to give you, it's yours to seek. You've got to seek the truth that fits your life and, and whatever, man, that you see. But quit finding it on TV. Quit listening to a government that has been out to destroy everything. Everything. It's not for your freedom. Nobody hates us for our freedom. They hate us because we come there and murder them. All you people that support Israel, you're fucking morons. What the hell are you doing supporting murder? When did Jesus say support murder? Never. And, and about Jesus and Christians, I'm, I'm going to throw this in there real quick. When Jesus Christ was alive on the earth, he was always doing something. I never found a one verse in the Bible that said Jesus sat down and put his feet up one day. Or that Jesus prayed to God except for that one time. God, you know, take this from me. He, 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 he sweated blood and cried blood. That was supposed to have been in private. and It got written in the Bible, so I don't know how that got in there. But, but, but other than that, so what do y'all do? What do y'all do? Y'all don't do nothing. You don't do nothing but goddamn pray. You pray, oh, Jesus, I need new pair of shoes. Oh, Jesus, baby needs dance lessons. I need some money. Jesus didn't pray to have everything done. He did it. So why don't you Christians get out there and do something? Like, number one, stop baby murder. Then stop this fucking government, man. They're not there to help you. They're minorities or what they make. They create minorities. Because without a need, there would be no government. 
if you didn't need them and were so scared about some boogeyman getting you, there would be no government, not like there is now. I look around me every day for the last couple months, and I put myself in front of me. some very beautiful things. I've healed, I've healed in my mind, I've healed in my heart. I've always loved my mother, this mother, our planet. I've, I've, I love, I've always loved her since I can remember. It's, it's all there was to me. But we, but we lost our way with that. And for some reason, I feel like that's the key. That's the key. If we, if we connect back to this planet, this planet right here, we connect back to it, then maybe we realize that that's where life comes from. Life isn't given through vaccination. Life isn't given through better health care. Life isn't given through freebies. Or, you know, we're supposed to help our neighbor anyway. Right? So why is the government doing it? When did the churches stop helping people? I don't know. I, I, there's a man somewhere, he, at 90 years old, can't even give people homeless men sandwiches. You can't collect rainwater. You can't grow a garden. Why? Because they have to be needed. And you're falling for it, suckers. You're fucking falling for it. And all you're doing, you know, fine, because that's it. That's a good thing about being a separatist. You can separate from everything around you and believe what you want and do what you want. As an individual, that's your right, man. You can go do what you want. But you're taking my water. You're taking my organic food. You're taking my planet. And you're raping it. No, nah, you got to have a new car. And, and, oh, yeah, this one don't guzzle as much gas. But what was it made of? Plastic. Aluminum, all the things that kill. You believe lies about him, just like you believe lies about the South. So as far as I'm concerned, you're fucking stupid. And your stupidity is fucking up this planet. Because without this planet, you're not going to have your religion. You're not going to have your politics, your voting. You're not going to have your kids. You're not going to have your house. You're not going to have your white picket fence or your new SUV. Or you're not going to get to go ride motorcycles on the weekend. What you doing, baby? Would you hold my flag for me for one second while I get to this? Yeah. How are you fighting, baby? There you go. Hold it. Say that. Come here. They want to put you on TV. I don't know. Just keep my hat. Use this as a uh, as a night shirt. Uh, when you get bigger, you can wear that. You know. What purpose today? Well, as you know, the city council here in Ringo, the deep, removed the battle flag and replaced it with General Claiborne's flag. I don't have a problem with General Claiborne's flag. I certainly have a problem with the way the council pulled the flag down. And just like most of these folks around here in the South and of America who have become politically correct and, uh, and not necessarily historically correct or socially correct in the body politic. They certainly don't talk about the place of honor and dignity that folks who look like me earned under the Christian cross of St. Andrew that I'm very proud to carry here today. So I'm certainly here to bring attention to not only to your citizens but to the entire world of an injustice that's taking place right here in Ringo at this depot as well as all across the South Land of America as we face social cultural genocide for those of us who want to embrace our ancestors and for those of us who call ourselves Southern. And certainly these folks around here who voted to take this flag down, who call themselves Southern, ought to be ashamed of themselves. You're a hundred percent for the Confederate flag. Listen, in 2002, gone in the uniform of a Southern soldier carrying this flag, I walked 1,606.1 miles all the way from Aspen, North Carolina to Austin, Texas, to bring attention to the place who are folks who look like me who earn the place of honor and dignity under this flag. Absolutely, I'm 100% totally but I am Southern above all else. Where you live? I'm born and raised in the city of Asheville, North Carolina, sir. I'm the media past president of NAACP in the city of Asheville, North Carolina. Well, what brought you, did you come to Ringo, Georgia, just to carry the flag today? Absolutely. It's important. I don't come just to Ringo. I go all across the country with my flag. Anywhere you'll find this kind of injustice that you have here. You've got folks now running for president of the United States of America. 
talking down on my flag, my southern heritage, my ancestry. Why would I not be in Ringo? Ringo's been on my site for a long time. I, I just finished my five-year reunion march back to Texas, so didn't have time to get around here. And, and along with the Sons of Confederate Veterans, I gave a key keynote speech for Black History Month in Cross City, Florida. And Ringo has been on my agenda for a long time. I'm very happy to be here. How long are you going to be here? Until my clothes get tired. So I, I don't know, until somebody run me off. Some mighty fine police officers came by this morning and told me to stay as long as I like, as long as I don't get any complaints around here. And certainly, I don't know why anybody would complain about old handsome black man standing here embracing uh, the flag of his ancestors and of my homeland, the South Land of America. So. All right, Walmart, you've got some explaining to do. I went to go buy it. Uh, printed cake from y'all the other day with this image on it. Y'all wouldn't do it. You got proof. So I wouldn't do it. Yesterday, we managed to get an ISIS battle flag printed. ISIS happens to be somebody who we're fighting against right now, who are killing our men and boys overseas and are beheading Christians. That's an ISIS battle flag cake. Then anybody can go buy at Walmart, but you can't buy a, 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 a Confederate flag toy, like say Dukes of Hazard's car. So Walmart, can you please explain why you're alienating Southern Americans with this trash that you allow to be sold in your store? Hands Up Don't Shoot became a rallying cry in protests across the country before most people realized it, that it wasn't true. Police brutality is real, but it is not racial. It is just that the black victims are the only ones treated as national stories. Race baiters, liberals, and the media are the real racists, stirring up the populace with hand-picked stories. Stories, by the way, which shouldn't even be controversial at all. Officer Darren Wilson, for example, was innocent due to evidence, including blood splatter, along with eyewitnesses claiming there never was a Michael Brown with his hands up. Only one that attacked the police officer to the point of bull rushing him and reaching into his vehicle to strike him. Why build a protest on this case? It makes no sense. In Cleveland, you have a 12 year old boy shot for holding a toy gun at a public park. Now that's a case to protest. Clearly, all boys should have the right to play at a park without getting killed by the police. But not nearly as much reporting was done on this tragic story, as was the Michael Brown case, which was built on a lie. There never was, hands up, don't shoot. It wasn't true. But there you have liberals and many poor blacks backing up this fantasy story, with White House officials showing up to Michael Brown's funeral, a criminal who physically intimidated a store clerk while robbing him and then attacking the police officer in his vehicle. Obama in February invited Trayvon Martin's family to the White House. Really? A case where the media toted around a picture of a little baby boy? When in reality, this was Trayvon Martin. And for Zimmerman, talk about the media rushing in judgment before they saw an actual picture of him. How many times did we hear about a white male, Zimmerman? This guy isn't white by any standard. How about the parents of the alleged revenge killings over the Trayvon Martin case? Did those parents of the two white boys get invited to the White House? Did the Justice Department attend their funerals? Where is Al Sharpton and the protesters? Instead, this story was buried. Police brutality is real and racism is real, but they are probably not tied together as closely as much as the media wants you to believe. Instead of people rallying that all lives matter, we have organizations like the National Association for Colored People, Congressional Black Caucus, Black Entertainment, and the National Al Sharpton Action Network leading the charge on just who the racists are, carrying signs that say, Black Lives Matter. Interesting that people who identify their organizations and voting bias off the color of their skin would be given so much credibility as to where the real racism in America is. I wonder where these groups are when an unarmed white man is shot by a police officer. Get your hands out now! Get your hands out! 
Get your... Get him out! Here is the deal, America. Police brutality is wrong, and we must do everything we can to stop it. There are too many damn laws. People have actually died in this country from just trying to sell cigarettes tax-free. <laughs> But you should also be aware of that if you attack the police, if you fire a gun into the air on a public street, you will justifiably be taken down by the police with a taser, pepper spray, an elbow, a nine millimeter. Or if you're walking down a street towards a building full of people firing a gun, you may even get a special Jack Bauer type ass kicking by a police officer. Of the 117 officers that died last year, one was strangled to death, 48 were shot, 18 died in a physical incident, two drowned, and 42 died in a vehicle crash, 10 of which died from being struck by a vehicle. Before you tell a police officer you can't protect yourself, you can't shoot a black person, and that he's a racist, remember that you and I only see the bad stuff when it makes the news. An officer in an inner city, he may witness citizen brutality on a nightly basis. Here you go, Al Sharpton. Here's something you can protest, something you can really get behind. Black lives do matter. And if you only want to focus on race, why don't you start with a new campaign? Stop black on black brutality. Because I assure you, this is an epidemic. Not the bad police officers attacking black citizens or the good police officers defending themselves against criminals like Michael Brown who attacked them. Hell, the street! <laughs> And here's something you can do. Please share this video and go to futuremoneytrends.com slash stop the hate, where you can easily share this video as well as contact Al Sharpton, President Obama, and handsupunited.org. Tell them it is time for them to apologize for fanning the flames of hate and lies that came with months of hands up, don't shoot protests that were built on a complete lie. Worse than police brutality, is the national media, politicians, and race baiters like Al Sharpton getting away with a frame job, turning Officer Darren Wilson into a monster, unhirable and hidden away due to a lie being spoken so loudly that millions believe it to be the truth to the point he receives death threats. FutureMoneyTrends.com slash StopTheHate has included the email addresses, Twitter handle, Facebook page, and phone numbers for the people who are the driving force behind that lie. Hands up, don't shoot. It's time for them to apologize.